What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, uh, back with another SketchUp plugin tutorial for you today. So yesterday I talked about the extension round corner. Um, it's basically an extension that can go in there and it can uh, basically do exactly what it sounds like. It can round off a bunch of corners. I mean, today I just wanted to go through some tips and some different things that you can do with that extension, uh, just to give you some kind of ideas of what you can do with it. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So uh, first thing I want to talk about is um, one of the things that that extension allows you to do is it allows you to select the faces that you want to round. So like for example, if I've got this face right here, um, and let's say this is something like a tabletop or whatever, something like that, um, I can come in here and when I select rounding a corner, I can come in here and select which faces it wants to round off. So like for example, let's say I want this top face to be completely flat and I also want this bottom face to be completely flat. I can go in here and unselect them by clicking on them. You can see how this starts off with a border, then the border goes away if I click on it. And then all it has is these corners like this. So if you look at these corners, that's the only thing it's gonna round off. So if I come in here and I leave that offset at about an inch and I go ahead and generate the geometry, you can see what that did is that came in and it rounded off all the corners on the tabletop right there. So instead of having to come in here and draw arcs and then uh, do push pull and stuff like that, you can use that to real quickly um, you can use that to real quickly round off those corners. So that's one thing you can do with that is you don't have to round all the corners, you can round just some of the corners. Um, so another thing that this is really good for is if I come in here and I've got a piece like this and I just want to round off the top of it, I can come in here and do that as well. So, you know, instead of selecting the edges like we had before, I don't have to round off the bottom. I can just select the top by clicking on it. And uh, you can come in here and you can adjust that offset value so that it's uh, closer in like this. So I can probably do that up to three inches. If I go to four, it's gonna overlap, but you can see that rounds off this shape just like this. Um, so if you want to come in here with a box and instead of using the follow me tool or something like that, you can definitely round this shape off. So that's, that's a cool option to have, but not only can you do that, you've also got the bevel tool. So you can come in here and you can push pull this to the same height. And then instead of having this rounded, you can come in here and you can bevel it just like this. So, and it's basically the equivalent of using the scale tool and something like that. Um, you know, you definitely could do that. Well, see, you can't even do that because it's going to mess up your face. You would have to use the push pull tool like this in order to do that, but it would work. Um, but what happens though, is that starts getting really complicated when you get more complex shapes like this one right here. So if I come in here See, that wouldn't work exactly the same with the push-pull tool if it was a complicated shape like this, because it's not just square. So if I use the, the push-pull and the scale tool, that wouldn't just work with the scale tool because this is a more complicated shape. But if I come in here and I draw and then I use round corner, and I come in here and I do that, we're going to use the bevel tool, though. So if I come in here and I use the bevel tool, in order to do that, I can bevel this entire top piece all the way around the top here, right here. So you could probably use that to create some roofs and stuff like that as well. But it really, really works to help you just generate some complex shapes. And then that works not only for square shapes, but it'll basically work on any shape that has basically edges. So I can come in here and I can round off the top of this cylinder as well. So if I draw a cylinder like this, I can come in here and I can round that off just like that. And if I wanted to, I could round the other side of it as well really easily. So you can create rounded cylinders that are rounded on both sides, stuff like that. And uh, the bevel tool works the same way. So I could come in here and I could bevel the bottom of this piece so that one top, one part's rounded, one part's more, um, more just beveled off just like this. So you can definitely use this to create rounded shapes and complex shapes. Um, but then one of the other things you can do with this that this is really good for is this is good for merging shapes together kind of organically. So like for example, if I have a shape like this that has a round shape on the bottom or a, 
a rectangular shape on the bottom and a rectangular shape on the top. Um, it's just kind of clunky the way these two things come together. But what you can do is you can use round corner to merge them. So you can come in here and you can select these edges just like this. So you can select the edges all the way around there and you can see what that does is it merges everything together. So now you've got kind of an organic shape that kind of flashes up or uh, goes up just like this. So it's really good for um, or organically merging shapes together. And that doesn't have to just happen with the rectangle tool. Like for example, if I come in here and I draw a circle and then I push pull that, you can do the same thing. And actually you can probably just select this piece right here and then come in there and do that. So you can see now that shape is rounded off and it's merged into your rectangular shape. So it's really good for merging different pieces together. Um, if you wanted to, you could do all this stuff at the same time. So you could select that, you could select this, and then you could select all these different edges and do them all at the same time and round things off that way. So it's, it's just a really versatile tool that you can come in here and it's going to create a few faces on this one, so it's going to take it a little while. But you can come in here and you can basically round off anything that you want to round off on this. So you can do a lot of fun stuff with it. You know, and just one, one of the things that I've done in the past. So right now what I have is I have hidden geometry turned on. So that means that you can see um, all the lines that, are, that SketchUp uses to make up the shape. So I can actually see them and draw along them and stuff like that. Um, if you want everything to just look smoother, you can come in here and turn hidden geometry off. Um, but basically what you can do, and I've done, like I said, I've done stuff like this in the past, is you can use that hidden geometry to create kind of a framework. Because remember, the only, the only thing that you really need in SketchUp to draw complicated shapes is you just need a path. Um, that follows the shape. So as, as, as long as you have paths, you can model along stuff. Like for example, if I come in here and I model a cylinder just like this, and then I round the top of it off. So let's say I set the offset to two inches. So you can come in here and adjust that and it'll round this off. You can see you've got this kind of cylinder shape. Well, now what you can do is you can use that hidden geometry that it generates to actually create a path that you can create things along. So if I come in here and I trace this just like this, and then I turn off hidden geometry, then I can put that geometry in a group just like this. I can put the other geometry in a group and hide it. And then I can use this as a path to generate like a pipe along using something like pipe along path or whatever you like to use for that kind of thing. So I can create this path right here and then I can unhide this piece. And then now what I can do, I'm going to turn hidden geometry back on. The trick here is you have to find the center if anyone, if anyone knows a really easy way to find the center of a circle that works consistently, let me know. But you can come in here and you can, I think I had a 48 sided circle. You can basically come in here and you can copy this item along a path just like this. And then now you can either hide this and you've got this kind of cool framework just like this or you could do what I've showed you how to do before where you come in here and you set the background to kind of a glass. So you can set this to like a translucent glass just like this. And then you've got a glass piece with a whole bunch of with a whole bunch of like ridges on it. So you can use this to create kind of cool like storefront shapes or stuff like that. You can come back in here, turn your hidden geometry off. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. So um, basically the idea of this video is just to uh, show you uh, some of the some of the stuff you can do using Round Corner um, from Fredo 6. I recommend you go check it out. Uh, it's available for download in the Sketchication warehouse. Um, it's free. I'll link to it in the notes below, but definitely download it and give it a try. It's a really cool extension that uh, you can do a whole lot of stuff with. So I'll leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought if you're using this extension. Um, you know, if you can think of some cool applications for this. If you've got some ideas, I'd be happy to make a video on it um, just to kind of show you some stuff that we can do with it or 
you know, if there's stuff that you've done with it in the past, I'd love to just have a sketch up conversation with you guys. That's one of my favorite things about this channel. Um, if you like this video, remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you really like what I'm doing on this channel, uh, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, that just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. Um, in any case, though, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.